uh, final talk in this session, which is will be given by Max, and Max is a research associate at the University of Applied Science Stuttgart, uh, supervised by Jan Seedorf, and he is currently working in a project called Sensory Data and Documented Reality, and his focus here is on security and privacy. And today he will talk about experience with benchmarking, advanced cryptography, and Riot. So the floor is yours, Max. Hi. Is the sound okay? Sound is okay. Okay. We, we do not see anything so far. Ah, it's coming. Yes, works. All right. Um, so, hello and welcome to my talk, Functional Encryption and Homomorphic Encryption, uh, Experiences with Benchmarking Advanced Cryptography in Riot. Uh, this talk is intended to be an uh, introduction into um, those cryptographic schemes and uh, shout out to the community um, that such things exist. And uh, yeah, I start before I start uh, a quick introduction of myself and how I got involved with Riot. Uh, as uh, Matthias already uh, introduced me, I'm Max uh, Max Pankreen, and I work with uh, in the research project center from the uh, University of Applied Science Stuttgart. And they work in the working group um, security and privacy, and we were interested in seeing uh, interesting crypto with the use that are uh, good for IoT. And what Riot seemed to be a really good, uh, a really good opportunity because it's also a research project and developed with IoT in mind, so a perfect fit. Um, here you can see a brief overview of this talk. So I start with clarifying the projects of our uh, research. And then I already start with an introduction to uh, functional encryption and homomorphic encryption. Then I uh, will uh, mention the options that we have or that I had in with Riot, what can be done, what can be done and show you some initial results that I had with um, benchmarking. And uh, also I will mention the challenges that I encountered while uh, working with, with that. Uh, as, as a finish up, I will mention the lessons learned and the lookout and the plans for the future. So uh, surely many of you are familiar with traditional symmetric and asymmetric schemes like uh, AES, RSA, and elliptic curves. Um, we use them for uh, generally for encryption, signing, macking, and verifying of signatures and macs. And though, though there are other um, cryptographic schemes than, uh, than that, and they are, offer really useful additional features that are particular for IoT, uh, quite interesting. And two of those I will introduce you in a minute, uh, fully uh, functional encryption and homomorphic encryption. And we thought this will be a good research project because those schemes are quite state of the art and there's not not a lot of evaluation going on in uh, with real world uh, environments. So um, here are the promised objectives. Um, the goals of our research are uh, to help developers uh, who want to know what they need and what can be done. So basically, we want to close the gap um, between the cryptographic community and uh, uh, people that want to use it by providing comprehensive imperial data um, achieved by applying those schemers on common real-world systems. 
And a second, second goal would be um, co contributing to Riot and the IoT uh, community by uh, adding additional schemes of that kind. Uh, currently, we are focused, as I've already mentioned it now a few times, uh, on functional and homomorphic encryption and the uh, enabling of benchmarking of those in, inside of Riot. So here I come to the, uh, here we are already uh, at the introduction of functional encryption. Uh, functional encryption comes in two different tastes, or th uh, they are actually uh, po po uh, other possible ways, but I, I'll um, show you now two, uh, identity-based encryption and attribute-based encryption. Uh, I'm going to start with identity-based encryption, and uh, this is a really cool scheme because it has a really cool uh, property um, that uh, all, all the participants use just one public key, which is issued by a central authority, and can encrypt with this public key messages um, by using this public key and, a, and, a, and an identifier. So there's basically no public key infrastructure needed. And this is, of course, already a great advantage for for uh, uh, IoT use cases, but um, on the uh, another plus thing is we don't need to store pub uh, a lot of different public keys. We just need to store the identifiers and the general public key. Um, so uh, another way of using um, identity-based encryption would be even to use it as a basic access control. A system by uh, when you think about uh, uh, ex, 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 exper uh, uh, keys that can expire and uh, because the private keys are issued by a central authority and attribute based takes this uh, idea uh, away uh, a step further because here we don't encrypt with identities, here we encrypt with policies. And this is super interesting for uh, IoT-based uh, um, IoT use cases. Um, for example, in a production environment, we can encrypt data uh, with uh, policies that uh, uh, are not limited to one identity, but to a whole group of people. So uh, in the next slide, you can see uh, an image that should help you to understand what attribute-based encryption is capable of. Um, we have here a simplified setup. On the left side, you can see two sensors, each belonging to their own uh, facilities and uh, they encrypt their data with the, uh, their, their policy of their facility. They're hooked up to a server, which could be a gateway or a logging server, it really doesn't matter so much. And then we have the clients on the right side that try to access the data and only the clients with the appropriate uh, policy uh, per permission uh, can access the data, and it's also possible to have to to mix policies. And like like we see mm, this one client here, this building manager, he has the uh, opportunity to uh, get all the data addresses, which is in this in this network of both facilities. So next we come already to homomorphic encryption. Homomorphic encryption is a really cool uh, scheme as well because it allows us to use arithmetic operations on, to, uh, on the ciphertext. Um, but we need to differentiate here 
with uh, fully homomorphic encryption and partially homomorphic encryption. Uh, fully homomorphic encryption means that we can basically uh, execute any any uh, operation and uh, unlimited times, but it is quite uh, intense in its uh, computational uh, expense uh, requirements. And partially, partially homomorphic encryption is a bit cheaper in that sense, but it has the limits of being mm, bounded to a number of uh, rep repetitions of some operations or uh, limited to to just a few operations. Um, so a homomorphic uh, property could look like this. We have um, two ciphertexts and we can make an operation, an additional operation, and then we get uh, as an output the encryption of the addition of both plain texts. Um, same thing could work with uh, multiplication and the use cases are quite uh, interesting here as well. We could uh, compute a, a sum by, uh, by all, all, uh, without knowing the individual uh, values. So this could be really interesting in a digital voting uh, system. We could collect all the votes and just just see the result, but not uh, the individual um, the, the 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 vote itself. And another use case would be a, so a zero knowledge computation, um, because the result is encrypted too. We uh, we, we could just um, send send our values to an outsourced uh, server, let let it compute and send it back to us, send the result back to us, and we can then just decrypt this result. So how do we get those uh, in, in Riot? Uh, so there are actually a lot of open source libraries that exist out there, but uh many of them have unsatisfiable requirements and they are not part of riot and at the moment we are uh, we want to avoid porting uh, if possible so there, there is already a library that is quite interesting for us uh, in riot maybe you heard of it it's called relic toolkit and it is a, a library with uh, embedded systems in mind. So it is quite uh, has, has satisfiable requirements and supports like all, uh, already mentioned uh, schemes that are interesting for us, like a few homomorphic encryption schemes. And there's even a, an identity based uh, key agreement. And yes, uh, it's available as a plugin in Riot, so it's ready to use. So here you can see some initial runs that I made. Um, please keep in mind, I run that uh, natively on my laptop. And as you can see from the standard derivation, it's not super rep uh, representable, but still you can make some uh, assumptions about the runtime of functional and homomorphic encryption like they're almost or uh, quite clear magnitude uh, bigger than than um, classical encryption like RSR, which is uh, in terms of embedded systems already quite expensive. So uh, of course there were uh, and there are still challenges uh, with, with benchmarking. Uh, there is a big pity because Relic actually has a benchmark built in, but this is not uh, functional in the port 
to write. And I'm not a, I'm not a developer of myself, so porting it on my own would be uh, not not really uh, feasible, I think, at least at the moment. And yeah, we have still work going on in making uh, deciding how we compare the different schemes because we want to have uh, uh, to to deliver. Uh, uh, a good, a good. Uh, uh, we, we want to compare the schemes, and there are problems like is key key length is not equal to key length. Maybe you know that from RSA and uh, elliptic curve. So can we say that a polyer scheme key of one thousand twenty four bit is the same as an one thousand twenty four bit of RSA? Uh, Probably not, but um, we are not really sure. So if you are interested, a shout out, shout out for uh, my repository here. Um, okay, here we already get to the lessons learned. So um, of course, obligatory uh, when you work with embedded systems, uh, always memory is crucial, power usage is crucial. Uh, so uh, the the big library jungle was of course uh, a mess as well, and build systems are hard. This is a thing that I have still to work on, especially in terms of um, the the I encountered this uh, with trying to port the benchmark of Relic. Uh, on the plus side, uh, it's quite nice to work with uh, Riot. OS, uh, real-time OS is of course cool for um, process man uh, managing, but especially for Riot, the huge amount of drivers is cool and the plugins. And yeah, uh, maybe as a as a shout out as well to to the Riot team, it would be nice to uh, to have a more newbie friendly access. Uh, I know there's a VS Code extension, but it is not really useful. It does not really uh, help so much. And uh, I heard about the project going on for supporting Arduino code. Uh, so I, I will definitely look into that further. I would be really interested to see that running properly. And yeah, finally, I want to mention in the lessons learned, um, thank you really much to the uh, Riot community. Uh, especially Peter Kitzmann of the Riot Team Hamburg helped me a lot in the uh, in the start. And finally, the outlook and future work. Uh, yeah, like already mentioned, we we're working with the uh, I work with the with the uh, harmonizing of the benchmarking, so uh, we get a good comparability and. The next step would be uh, running large scale experiments on uh, the IoT lab. And as a future work, we plan to involve the students uh, to run experiments on IoT hardware, uh, probably with Riot, and uh, integrating more advanced crypto in, in Riot would be a future goal as well. Yeah, that was already it. Okay, thanks, Max, for this uh, presentation about quite uh, preliminary work. Um, I mean, for sure, uh, homomorphic encryption uh, is an important tool, in particular in the context of IoT. Uh, if you think about smart grids, etc., so it's uh, definitely worth uh, to um, put effort into this and to uh, provide the community uh, a tool to uh, assess. Um, the different implementations. So, if there are no uh, super questions, I would suppose that we um, continue the discussion in the virtual hallway in Gather Town. And mm -hmm. because we are already a little bit late. Um, and yeah, there is no further questions, no urgent questions. Yeah. And then let's meet um, on schedule, uh, which is. Um, 
uh, let me see, uh, in uh, 25 minutes um, on the session on IoT networking. So uh, 3 p.m. UTC time or uh, 5 p.m. Uh, European time um, leads, uh, meets back here in WebEx. And otherwise, enjoy your coffee break in Gaza.